Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another Dark Avenger comic book review at midnight. At midnight. midnight. And we are talking about the books that were released on May 10, 2017. And this is episode number, what, you going to say it? Three, 392. Yep, and that means there are... Eight. I have nothing bad to say about this, Aiden. It actually looks good. Oh, gee, thank you. For once you... Except you printed it wrong. It oh, this wow, way. are you kidding me? Now, I told you before we went live, I tried to get it in Should have printed it this way. So, oh, as perfect as it is, it's wrong. Oh, there's Larry. We got Rebel Comics in the comments. We are doing this live as always. It is midnight here in Brooklyn. We are tired. We have lots of books, a lot of books. Unfortunately, I'm kind of sad to report that we don't have that many indies this week. Well, it looks we like we don't have an indie for physical, we have it for digital. Yeah, we don't have, I don't have that many independents, and that's kind of sad because I always enjoy reading a couple of independent books. Nick Lovett, what's going on, man? And um, I see a lot of DC, I see a handful of Marvel. Marvel just announced, by the way, if you missed out on the live show, I was on Larry's channel, Rebel Comics. We were talking Celestial Falcon comics and whatnot. You guys know how much I love talking comics. I, Larry basically was going to tell me to shut up because I was talking too much on his show. It was an awesome show. Week. You from the Branch country. and I had a lot of fun. I would definitely say if you guys want to go check that video out, it was fun. And then if you haven't subscribed to Larry yet, subscribe. Yes. Where, what are you doing? Subscribe. But anyway, we have a nice amount of books this week. Very few disappointments, but there were disappointments. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to get through these, and then we're going to go to bed. Oh, we're going to get five hours. And sleep. if you're watching this on my channel, and it's towards the end of June, you're not watching this at, in the, at 12 a.m. You're watching it at 12 in the afternoon. Lucky you. So here we go. And we got Spartan in the comments. All right. So we're going to start with the comic that was released or was it? Recently? No, it was released before. All right. So this was not released on May 10th. And that is from our good friend, Danson. And that's Sorority of Power issue number 12. ArgoComics.com. A-R-G-O Comics.com. And you can get this book for yourself. Yes. And let me tell you. And my, my my Argo 5 is coming soon, and it's coming in dose. Too, yeah. In dose. Yes. But uh, actually, reading Sorority Power, I got this through rather quickly. Really. I, I read it myself like, uh, that time. The story was about this uh, new villain who is known as uh, Kalarg or K K Kilarg, however you say it or something like that. Stop criticizing about my uh, thing. Thank you. And um, he's basically terrorizing everybody, and Sorority of Power are uh, trying to go after him, and they're also doing their little uh, foundation fundraising, uh, I believe, for that. So um, I can't remember what her name was, uh, the, the green uh, muscular one. Wow, why can I remember? Well, basically, they had a fight scene with each other, and... Um, Dan would be very upset with you. <laughs> no. Like, I'm just saying, like, uh, it was a really interesting issue, and uh, the pinups also, I must say. I always love looking at the pinups, and there was some really good ones. Some giggity goo stuff over there as well. I mean, you can't go without a Sorority of Power review without saying it, uh, that. But uh, I still give it five giggity goo stars. It was a really awesome uh, read, and uh, something that you'll definitely. Larry Lawhorn in the house. And some you'll definitely want to What the up. heck is wrong with you people? Don't you sleep? We're the ones that's supposed to stay up late. But yeah, but it was a really great fight and a really awesome book that all of you should read. Black Cloud issue number two. I'm done reading Black Cloud. These are books that came out this week, by the way. Yes, we are now in the books this week. I don't know. I really... Uh, I know everybody on Frontline was already done with Black Cloud after issue one. I had I had to try one more issue. Didn't hold me. The mayor's son is trapped in Dream World. There is somebody who's looking for this woman, and he doesn't look like he wants to kill her. He just wants to talk. 
Uh, no. no. I would definitely say try it. I would not recommend not to try it, but <clears throat> I'm, I'm officially done with it. And unfortunately, that's my only, and this is sad, my only independent book this week. That's impossible, man. I'm going to double check and see if any of my other indies. Can you go ahead? I'm going to yeah. check because there is something So, wrong here. starting with my books, let's start with John Carter, the end issue number four. I think either if this book's not ending soon, I'm going to drop it because seriously, I just cannot stand the artwork in this comic book. <laughs> and the story is kind of dragging out a little bit. Like, we have John Carter that reunited with his son. And he's saying about the whole, I'm sorry for what I did to you, but was out of furious and everything. And he actually forgave him. I thought there was going to be a part where he would have revenge on him, but it actually turned out well as uh, I thought it would. And then we have DJ Torres who gets a little bit involved with this uh, as oh, well. Oh, that's why. I'm sorry. Let me interrupt you a second. <clears throat> we did get It's Only 9.20 p.m. Where I Live. Lucky you, Larry. Um we we did not review or we didn't read any to review as far as the free comic book day books, which would add one or two that I'm noticing to our list. And we didn't get the ones from uh, Midtown yet. Keep going. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. But um, it's just that there's like a big war coming on and the story felt really dragged. So <clears throat> I really don't know if the next issue doesn't hold me. I might as well drop it. Only if it's ongoing. If there's like maybe one or two issues, maybe I'll stick around. But I don't know about this book, guys. It's just the all work, too. I just, I can't. Oh, and that's right. The crossover between DC and, and uh, IDW technically counts as an independent. I well, forgot about those that. two. They're in my DC pile, guys. I do have two books from IDW. Apparently, it was released from IDW, <clears throat> but I accidentally stuck it with DC. So we're going to keep it in that order. But going to something much better, and I did review this on Comic Frontline, by the way. I only did one book this week. Ghostbusters Funko Universe One Shot. And since um, I do reviews of Ghostbusters, I thought of checking this out. And they're all in the uh, their Funko form from the Funko figures and stuff like that. And it was really interesting about the uh, ninja and samurai uh, demonic uh, uh yeah, demonic beings that were in this book there they were known as the four masters the ghostbusters go after them and they were really hard to defeat so they had to find every which way of how to uh defeat them and if you want to find out how you can check it out on comic from mine where i this is how they sad defeated. i'm on the last part of the list here shout out to all new fathom awesome artwork <clears throat> but i have i have not one book for me that's yeah. sad but um it's an enjoyable read. I mean, if you're Ghostbusters and if you like Funko figures and everything, then this is the book for you. But uh, it's really recommended, and I'd say check it out. Red Sonia One Shot. This is the Long Walk to Oblivion. And in Red Sonia, in this book, it's titled that because there's someone that came with a message for Red Sonia to use her sword against, and this is another demo. Why do we keep reading about demons and stuff? I don't know. I want to know why I can't find any books that were mine. I don't know. But anyway, she has to go find this demon that is controlled by uh, Kulin Gakad, however you say Oh, shoot. Shout out to Tank Girl, World War Tank Girl number two. That was another awesome book. I read it last week. Man, what's going on? I forgot to leave it in my folder. But I'm not reviewing it, so I'm just shouting it out. It was a good book because I'm not reviewing it. That's why I didn't yeah, so, put a picture in the folder. Yeah, so she makes this long journey to uh, let them uh, use the sword, but she acts, She uh, needs to know where this demonic uh, entity is. So she goes to it and fights off against it. And it was really, I really love the artwork in this book. The artwork was really good. Red Sonja books have amazing artwork. And, What's uh, up, Jeremy Renfro? Love volume one of Red Hood and the Outlaws and this Lobdell at his best. We'll get to that. Yes. But uh, look at Mike's upside down. I, would, I would recommend. I threw it finally. I forgot to do that. 
I would recommend you check this out before I give this boy a long walk to a Oh, I'm interested in seeing what... Okay. Yeah. No one interested in her. This one? Yes. Yes. A New Valiant Book, issue number one, Eternal Warrior Awakening. And this, I believe, is written by uh, Rob Vendetti, if I could uh, see there. Uh, yup, it's by Rob Vendetti. Yes, so... You guys know... Uh, Rob Vendetti's my favorite. Rob uh, Vendetti writer. does Green Lanterns. What's yes, up? SM uh, down H9. Yep. And uh, Renfro. I said, Renfro. oh, yeah, he said Renfro. Right, I forgot. So, uh, in this book, we have uh, Gillid who uh, has his origin story. And his origin story is actually really accurate about how he got the axe. And it's first a dream that he had of when he was killed. I'm raising my hand to answer of, the comment. Uh, when he was killed, actually. And uh, after he was killed, he goes after the guy in revenge of killing him. And he's like saying, but no, you're, you're dead. Like, how are you still alive? And with that axe, he just slide, he just decapitated him and all that. So now, um, I forgot who the other person that was with him, the that woman. She had like a long name. Uh, she's from the uh, Geomancer. I can't remember, but we'll just say that. And uh, there's like a war that's going on, and with the Eternal Warrior that's with the war. It looks like it's going to be a really great issue. Yeah. So I'm really going to read more of that. And finally, from my pile, uh, Day of the Dead, issue number four. I believe there's only two more parts left until we conclude the Day of the Dead. Oh, my God. Why is it? There we go. Hot cover. Yeah, that is actually a hot cover. But uh, going into this book, it's really about um, her talking with uh, Talisman, and we get a little bit more information about Talisman about how uh, the father wasn't really as much of a great role model to him as the mother. The mother adored her son, and all that stuff. And then we get more of a. Uh, insight of uh these um dead girls that uh, she was looking for because uh there was like this whole um investigation that they were gonna go to find and they actually do find them but the ending part uh, <laughs> i can't give that away that that that's something you guys have definitely gotta read because the ending is definitely something that is gonna really be shocking though because it's it's just Wow. Now we're going to get to your book? Or are you falling asleep on me? Wake up. What do you mean my book? You got to go. Oh, you're a double with independence. Yeah, that is big too. That's right. it. Because you don't have any. I know, but you took it off. And I'm like, why are you doing that? Oh, well, I, I was saving battery. New Superman issue number 11. I really enjoyed this issue. I enjoyed that Keenan is accessing his powers and he can access them one bit at a time uh by using his focus and by meditating and he's able to access his super speed in this book and they're i like how they actually and i didn't realize this until they made mention of it the flash from china was actually in the flash comics it's the girl who couldn't control his speed at first and the flash helped her control it and then he allowed her to keep it. She's the Flash from China. So I like how they have that little connection there. But anyway, Keenan gets his super speed and they have a epic race, as they always do. Until this group, the group of, um, oh God, I forgot what they were, who they were. The white something of China a resurrect this evil wizard that's connected to the Wonder Woman of China. And they inject doomsday virus into him so he's this big doomsday mutant turtle and they have to fight him wow and it was i enjoyed this issue a lot i also enjoy that this is going to be the new superman and because the justice league of china cannot deal with the wizard the way that the head of china wanted they released superman zeros <laughs> Yes, there was another Superman. Chris, you need to... Oh, delete, delete, delete. Hey, you be like Matt Hardy. The hair to make... Wait, you need to delete, delete, delete part. 
get part of this hair and then make it white like Matt Hardy. Oh, oh I get what you mean. Hell no, I ain't going to do what Matt Hardy does. That's Matt Hardy's thing. Well, that means I'm Jeff Hardy. It's your friend. All right, I had to try this because it's connected to Secret Empire. And obviously this book is going to end after Secret Empire or it'll get renumbered again. Secret Warriors issue number one. Quake is the main here. And it shows a before Secret Empire started and after. And it showed that Captain America, uh, you can't find Superman 11 anywhere. New Superman 11? I'm surprised, Larry. It should be accessible. But uh, anyway, um, I lost my train of thought. Um, Quake goes rogue because Captain America sent her team on basically a suicide run. And this was as Secret Empire was happening. And now Cap wants Quake to come in because Hydra is leading the, um, oh, what do you call it, is leading S.H.I.E.L.D. now. And Quake is basically a fugitive on the run because she's M.I.A. or AWOL, actually. And what happens is Quake is trying to free Inhumans from the jail that was put together by, Hy by um, Hydra. However... She's looking for one person specifically, and she teams up with Devil Dinosaur and, um, oh, God, I forgot the girl's name. Brant would know who is here. And Miss Marvel, they team up. They find, And we find out it's Karnak that they're trying to free, and Karnak doesn't want to go with them, but then he sees that Moon Girl is with Quake, and he's like, hmm, maybe I will team up with you. And that was kind of a very weird creepy old guy going with the team now because there's this young girl on it that he likes huh. i don't know that was very convenient that he's like oh moon girl's with you maybe i'll tag along and she's like you're weird and he's like i know and i'm like what book are you reading that's what i said i don't know but uh, i'm gonna next. i'll uh i'll probably i'm being honest with you guys if I end up reading issue two before the review, I'll review it. If I don't, I won't be sad if I miss reviewing it. Weapon X issue number three. Domino is the new target for the two androids, and you got Old Man Logan and Sabretooth stalking the robots to catch them. Chris, the Incan Ghost Dance does the Incan Ghost Dance. The hell is that? I oh I get it. Alan says does the Incan Ghost Dance. What's up, Alan? Welcome to the show in the comments. But um, yeah, so D Domino's the target. Logan and Sabretooth end up saving her. The two androids self destruct. Long story short, they notice they need more than just mutant genes. So now their next target is all new, is the totally awesome Hulk. And guess what? The next part of the story takes place in Totally Awesome Hulk, issue 19. The crossover begins, and Weapon X literally is only in its third issue, and it's already crossing over. Why do I get the feeling that Weapon X, after this story arc alone, is going to be done? The Incan Ghost Dance Mike is an Indian dance that my ancestors used to do to celebrate. Okay. Well, Weapon X is interesting, I will say that, but I think it's going to be the first... The second book canceled. I think Iceman will be the first. I think Weapon X will be right behind it. I think Astonishing X-Men is going to do what Weapon X should have done. But I'll still read it till the end. Okay. And one book that I have uh, digitally is Deadpool issue number 30. It's Deadpool. It, it's, I, don't, I don't know what to say about this book. First of all, this book was... A long, long issue. How long and was it? I'm going to tell you what the whole book was about in less sentences than the whole book itself. Well, I would hope so if it was a long There's book. There's a, like a we like this uh, important weapon that Deadpool's looking for, and he's trying to find out where it is. So the other person is telling him it's at nowhere. K-N-O-W-H-E-R-E. -E. Yeah, and space. Right. And then he's thinking it's N-O, like nowhere, and then all this other stuff, and then he kills the alien. Then when the guy tells him from uh, Atsid and everything, he's like, oh, that no way. I'm like, the whole story of looking for the weapon and everything was 
beyond <laughs> pointless. What the hell was I reading? That book. I know that's the book I was reading. Like between this and John Carter, stay tuned tomorrow for Frontline Live, which will be nine thirty Eastern Standard Time. Tomorrow 30, night, 10 o'clock around then. And one of those two are going to be my worst books because I'm going to have to really think about one of those oh, two. Oh, I can tell you right now. I know what my worst book is going to be. Well, we'll wait for that tomorrow night. But for that alone, Deadpool I don't is think it's going to surprise anybody once we get to it. Um, but Deadpool 30 is just, just there. Yeah. And now we are going into the physical piles of the big two. And I saw that. This is it. Amazing Spider-Man 27, which finally has brought me to the conclusion that I might actually be dropping Amazing Spider-Man. I mean, I was on Justin's live show this week, and he was doing cuts. And I look at my books, and I know that when Marvel starts up again, I'm going to be having to make, you know, make choices on what's physical, what's digital, what's not going to be read, what's going to be reviewed, what isn't going to be reviewed. And um, Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man is coming out next month. We've got Renew Your Vows, which is actually in this pile. And then we got this. So Spider-Man, we find out why Sil what happened to Silver Sable, why she isn't dead. We also find out that Spider-Man has an arsenal. Basically, Spider-Man is Tony Stark. And it just, first of all, Norman Osborn had a facelift. And I gotta agree with Mike Spider Slayer here. It's like the Joker. So basically, Norman Osborn has Jokered his face, and now his goal is to destroy Spider-Man. Of course, you got Shield that has Peter Parker and Parker Industries Public Enemy Number One. Bobby quits Shield and takes a few people with her. Obviously, this is all happening before Secret Empire. The next story arc involves Secret Empire. <clears throat> oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention in Secret Warriors, Coulson is missing. If this matters to anybody from Shield, so Spider-Man and the others are fighting a bunch of goblins, and we find out that Norman's plan is to shoot this gigantic missile somewhere, I believe, into this the country, and it's going to turn all of the people into goblins, and it's up to Spider-Man to stop them. Why do I care about this story arc? Tell me, why do I care about this story arc? I mean, this doesn't feel like a Norman Osborn Spider-Man thing. It, it doesn't... Why does... <clears throat> why does his face look like he had a fight with a blender? Because that's exactly what happened, apparently, in this book. And I... And Mike can be Brother Mikey. Oh. No. There is no... There is no Brother Nero. There is no... There is no Hardys in this house. Why can't you go in your book? Thank you. Why well, did you... So, I... You did. I, I, as much as I love Alex Ross's work on these covers, and yes, it is cover price. I could read this digitally. I truly could and save the space in my boxes, save the space in my everything and just save it online because that's where everything stays on Comixology don't know if this is going to be the end for Amazing Spider-Man and me. I really don't. But I can tell you guys I'm I'm at my breaking point with Amazing Spider-Man. This story, especially because I paid $10. Well, I didn't pay $10. I paid $5 because I bought it from DCBS. But the fact is Marvel charged $10 for the first part of this story arc. And I'm still three parts in. I could give two craps about it. That's bad. That is so That's bad. bad. That's bad. It's so bad because I'm telling you that Tevia was right. Tevia was right. How the hell was Tevia right? I don't know, but that's the first I've ever heard you say that. I must be dreaming. Old Man Logan issue number 23. I reviewed this for Frontline. It finally breaks the mold. And uh, Logan actually is able to kind of interfere with things as he's jumping through time. He tries to tell Bobby where he's being held, but it makes no sense because it's a huge plot hole. Because that Iceman is from an alternate world where he killed Iceman. 
So if the Bobby <clears throat> Iceman from the Marvel Prime world was to somehow remember that, there's a huge plot hole with Old Man Logan's book then. And uh, basically, long story short, we do get to see... Um, oh, God, I was going to call him Mephisto. Um, I forgot his name. I want to show you guys some artwork anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the Twilight Zone. Chris said Tevia was right. I repeat, we are in the Twilight Zone now. Said. I'm sorry, we must be. <laughs> sorry, I, I had to. I couldn't. I just couldn't. I cannot remember this man's name. And I'm losing interest, losing interest. Asmidius. We get to see him again at the very beginning of the book. And then the big cliffhanger, old man Logan ends up in the time where <clears throat> the X-Men are dead. But his family's back. So he breaks the medallion and says, I'm home. How many of you, I know that the next issue is going to give me massive, massive feels. Because <clears throat> we all know old man Logan's coming back. <clears throat> and it's going to hurt. But while we're in Marvel Prime, we do have all new Wolverine issue number. The glare on for this plastic is terrible. These plastics are tight. <clears throat> All new Wolverine issue number 20. So Laura <clears throat> was the dying word. You need to get a glass of water. <clears throat> I might. I'm going to go get you a glass of water. No, I'm all right. Laura was the dying words on this alien's, this alien girl's. Um, they were her dying words, her dying last words. And all the smartest people in the world <clears throat> are trying to figure out how to cure this disease and why this girl mentioned <clears throat> ex well Laura's name and even Laura is kind of perplexed because she'd never seen it before in her life but the virus is all over Laura but her body is fighting it and it's kind of acting like a magnet <clears throat> he's joking because Tevi is right exactly <clears throat> that's probably why I'm dying so Gabby, of course, sneaks on to Roosevelt Island, which is um, <clears throat> being covered, being uh, barred off by um, S.H.I.E.L.D. And she wants to help Laura. And then this group of AIM agents end up stealing the alien girl's body to try to get some information because they're dying too. And they get nothing. So the scientist who's like, we quit AIM a long time ago back when Anne was brought out by somebody else, and they're like, maybe you have something, and they start examining Laura's body. And, uh... What's up, Ryan? <clears throat> oh, Ryan's in the com... Ryan's in the comment. Dude, past your bedtime. So, um... <clears throat> it turns out that, somehow, the virus is attracted to Laura. And if she touches people with the virus, apparently the virus attaches to her. And people are cured. So it's going to be interesting to see how Laura takes the virus away from everybody and then how she's going to uh, <clears throat> survive. Or if the virus will always be a part of her. Who knows? But this is a very interesting story arc. I'm liking it. I'm tired. Way past my bedtime. I know the feeling. Mine too. I'm exhausted. But I'm talking about books. I've got so many books to go still. So now we're getting into the good Spider-Man book. Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows, issue number seven. <clears throat> Magneto and Emma Frost teaming up Whoa. to, of course, defend mutant kind and destroy uh, everything else. So Spider-Man and Logan somehow survive a psionic attack from a mutant. I love the artwork in this book. I can't say enough about the artwork in this book as well. And you got... Mary Jane and Cyclops fight in the blob. We get more info on <clears throat> why Cyclops and Jean broke up. Um, <clears throat> we also have, uh, we find out why Jubilee kind of betrayed the X-Men. Because she kind of is angry at <clears throat> Professor Xavier for letting a lot happen and nothing ever changing. That the world still hates mutants. We have some beautiful artwork. Ryan Stegman artwork, everybody. <clears throat> Uh, Ryan Stegman. It's Ryan Stegman. And, um, <clears throat> Justin, you should not have dropped Old Man Logan because Diodato's artwork looks amazing. <clears throat> I had to say that. 
and I will get water once I'm done reading a million different books. Are you sure you don't want me to get it now? <laughs> you can grab me the soda. Maybe that's the best So idea. Spiderling ends up tricking Jubilee, and Shine actually gets them an escape route. <clears throat> and speak of the person long enough, and there he is. Uh, what's up, Tevia? Oh, so wow. Spiderling ends up fighting Jubilee, and the X-Men, or... <clears throat> yeah, no, the X-Men end up, or... I'm sorry, Mary Jane... Ends up taking down Magneto and Emma Frost, who apparently is controlling Magneto. <clears throat> and uh, saving the day. Jubilee ends up going to jail, but they're like, oh, but she'll be back. You know, <clears throat> Xavier will forgive her and all will be well in the world. And then, of course, you got Liz Allen, who is not happy that her son is obsessing over Spiderling. <clears throat> and now has Venom Goop. That she's going to be using possibly on Mary Jane. I don't know. I just get that feeling when I see the next cover. <laughs> because apparently the Regent costume is really tapping deep into Peter's powers. And it hurts. A lot. And I am taking a two second <coughs> to breathe. <clears throat> Man, Michael, you are so lucky. <clears throat> I mean, I have know. more books to read before we get to Michael. Well, you said you want more books. X Men Blue <clears throat> number three, Bastion is it's after Star Trek. No. <clears throat> after Girl, Supergirl, after Wonder, God, the Wonder Woman. So we find out that Bastion actually has. Reprogram a bunch of <clears throat> sentinels to protect mutant kind. And basically, um, Master Mold, I thought his name was ba yeah, it is Bastion. Master Mold <clears throat> is saving mutant kind, and the, and the X Men aren't believing it. They're like, there's something more here, there's something up, there's something wrong. And then Gene finally asks, so. What are you really, what, why are you really helping mutant kind? He's like, I thought it was obvious. I want to save mutant kind so that I can destroy them. And that's where the X-Men start fighting back. And he's like, but we're trying to save you. And then he's like, you know what? We're not going to fight. I'm just going to leave. And he teleports away with his uh, armada of um, sentinels. And they end up going home, and there's a wonderful Gene and Scott moment at the end of this book that made me very happy. But at the same time, <clears throat> you have Gene kind of questioning, you know, we're working for Magneto, and is that kind of changing us? Or, you know, we got to deal with Magneto, so what's going to happen when we have to fight him? <laughs> Moving into DC... The last Hanna-Barbera book I've been reading, <clears throat> the only one I've been getting physically, and it's over, <clears throat> Future Quest, issue number 12, which I'm hoping will open the door up to maybe there being a Space Ghost book or a Johnny Quest book. I will be very happy for either one of those. <clears throat> but it is the final fight against Omicron, and you've got everybody pulling out all the stops. All the way through, so much that Johnny and Haji actually end up taking over the helmet control. Magneto, too easy to deal with. Wooden gun. Exactly, Aww. Alan. <laughs> it's, hey, it's true. It's true. So everybody ends up fighting against Omicron. They end up defeating Omicron. No, no surprise. I mean, that's really not a spoiler at this point. It's the last part for the miniseries. And <clears throat> this could have gone only one of two ways. The world ended or Omicron ended. And Omicron ended. Everybody has this wonderful, yay, we won victory. My tour brings everybody home. We find out that the Herculoids have a new member of their family. Blip actually survived. Or not Blip, uh, Glorp. I'm saying stupid names right now. <clears throat> Glop. Glop survived. <clears throat> and all is right again. I love this last page, this last panel so much. It's not even funny how much I love that panel. <clears throat> but it was a great ending to a great book. <clears throat> if you have not read Future Quest, get the trade paperback with all 12 issues. You will not be sorry. 
especially if you are a fan of the Hanna Barbera line. I was very happy with it. <clears throat> the grand finale to Batman TMNT is issue six. And guess what? I was right. It takes place years later. <clears throat> Dick Grayson is no longer Robin. He is Nightwing. And Tim Drake has now taken over as Robin. <clears throat> and I love when the turtles show up because apparently the, uh, oh, God, the Utram army actually invades Gotham this time. I love how they're like, dude, love the new young younger Robin. And then Dick shows up as Nightwing, and they call him, like, <clears throat> older Robin, which I thought was really cool. And you could tell Donatello was not too happy about Nightwing because Donatello has a <clears throat> turtle crush on um, Batgirl. So that was a nice moment right there. <clears throat> For those of you that are fans of the animated Turtle or Batman series, you're going to love this book. I totally did. And it ended on such a really, really, really nice note. <clears throat> and it took us through all of the Batman, the animated series, timeline where first Dick was young, then Dick was old, now Dick was Nightwing, and now the series is over. Variant cover, really nice. <clears throat> oh my gosh. I know, it's just not going away, and I'm trying to work my way through it. I'm tired, and I have no, and my voice is fighting me. You're all this for you guys. Asleep. All this for everybody watching this live, and everybody who's going to watch this post live, and everybody who's going to watch this on my channel a month from now. Star Trek Green Lantern, Strange World, Issue 6 of 6, the grand finale to Star Trek Green Lantern. And the promise to a possible, possible next volume. And I would like to mention I might be checking out Saucer State because I love Alien Comics. <coughs> so, Kirk is now a Green Lantern. Kirk is fighting Khan and Sinestro. The Green Lanterns are back on Oa. Guess what? It turns out Carol's power, by the way, is powered by love. So love gives her the ability to basically cover the Enterprise in her star sapphire aura. And now that the Enterprise is basically indestructible and they're fighting everybody in space. You've got Kirk fighting uh, Khan. <clears throat> the other Green Lanterns recharge their batteries and they fight Sinestro. Khan is knocked out. Sinestro is going disappears he goes into some type of a temporal uh i forget where he's going where did they mention he's going the um oh god they mentioned it <clears throat> the antimatter universe gantha who says you're wearing our symbol but we don't know you hal jordan's like we have a lot to tell you guys we're from an alternate world yay and then we get the biggest hint of all hal jordan's like i need to let you know about there's one I recognize there's one solar system you did not check out. This was written for JME. And it has a big red sun. Krypton. Superman. If there's a volume three, I better see Krypton. Oh, man, what a way to put an ending to this book. It was great. This was a fun series. And Green Lantern right now, by the way, this week also, Green Lantern, Planet of the Apes, from Boom Studios dropped. Another good series, but I'm reading this one, so I didn't have the chance to... I didn't want to read too many crossover Green Lantern books, so I kind of chose not to review it. I am an issue behind with that, and I am liking that series a lot. So definitely check, check out Planet of the Apes Green Lanterns as well. Poor Hal and the Green Lanterns, they're all over the multiverse and all over different companies. Supergirl issue 9. So <clears throat> Supergirl, uh, Star Labs does a test day for her energy the energy phantom zone energy converter basically it takes all the energy from the phantom zone and it's basically clean energy <clears throat> no more gas or anything else no more harmful wasteful materials and then they get attacked by magog how long has it been since i've seen magog it has been a hot minute since we've seen magog but anyway his past is still fine, and you got Batgirl who shows up to help fight Magog with Supergirl. And what happens is one of Supergirl's friends ends up, he throws his spear at the Phantom Zone projector, and it ends up sucking in uh, Ben. So now Ben is stuck in the Phantom Zone. Supergirl and Batgirl fight Magog and take him down. 
Supergirl's worried about her friend Ben who was sucked into the Phantom Zone. Batgirl goes jumping in after him. Supergirl's ready to go, and, and I love how uh, Director Chase shows up as Supergirl's about to jump. And she's like, don't do it. I have a team. We can put them together. We'll all go. You can go in there with a the team. She's like, nope, got no time. Jumps into the Phantom Zone. Magog disappears, and now Supergirl, Ben, and Batgirl are stuck in the Phantom Zone. And who, who is the head of the Phantom Zone? I must say, I'm very happy with these statues. I won't buy any of them, but they look nice. But the Phantom King himself. This is going to be an interesting story. I am only holding on to Supergirl because I know she's going to play a role in the fight against Mr. Oz. And I believe there will be a crossover with Emerald Empress and Superman again soon. So I'm going to hold on to that. The weaker of the two stories right now with Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman issue 22, we are on God Watch. Victoria, oh, God, her last name left me completely, and uh, I just ruined that cover, but that's okay. I have extra cover. <clears throat> oh, Veronica Kale. There is a, a um, for charity convention, and the winner of the donations gets to spend a day, night, whatever, with Wonder Woman, and of course Veronica Kale is going to be there because she needs to do some some recons. They got Bruce Wayne and Lex Luthor fighting to get <clears throat> Wonder Woman, and then here comes Veronica Kale holding a five two nine. By the way, uh, five two nine. Uh, this is the artist saying we know about the five two nine universe. <clears throat> Don't say that name. But yeah. She's holding 529. She's holding the universe, my universe, in the, in the palm of her hand. But anyway, and she wins the bet. She gets a night out with Wonder Woman. And she uses that to basically learn about... Oh, there's a tournament. I was about to say, I saw Street Fighter. I thought there was going to be another comic. And she finds out, and she just goes out on this like little date with her, and they go out, and she's like, I'm being followed by these guys. I don't want my... You know, I want them alive. Will you fight them and protect me? Wonder Woman fights them, and it turns out it's a big reconnaissance to actually learn <clears throat> how Wonder Woman fights. And um, those people go to jail. She thanks Veronica for a wonderful night. And then she comes back and says, you know, when I told you I knew all about you, I wasn't kidding. I know what you did to my friend. You know her as Cheetah now. And I'm going to be keeping a close eye on you. To be concluded, but this is the past story. We are in the present right now. I'm going to put this back in the bad co I'm going to try to put this back in the bad cover for now. There we go. Uh, this is the weaker of the two. I'm going to be sticking with Wonder Woman until Greg Rucka's run is over, and then I will be probably moving Wonder Woman to a digital or possible drop. <clears throat> this will be around the time Marvel Legends starts. Don't say which name, Alan. Now, thank you, God. <clears throat> Michael's turn. I can rest. You're welcome. Justice League of America, issue number six. This is the beginning uh, story arc of um, part of um, Bastard. Bastard. That, that's Bastard yeah. in... Basically, it's Bastard in... Oh, what you call it? Um, German? No, it, the way Lobo talks. Ooh. Yeah. What's that? Wonder Woman Oh, I might get that Wonder Woman DVD. It comes out on May 16th. Wonder Woman DVD, everybody. Just didn't read this book, so didn't know the advertisement. Michael and I will probably be buying that for the whole video because I love me some animated DC movies. What movie is that? Wonder Woman. All right. We'll find out when we get it. All right. So it starts off in Pennsylvania where Agnes is talking <laughs> Where Adam is talking to uh, Agnes, who wants to, uh, act, yeah, wants to like uh, take over uh, the whole town, while Ray and the other Justice Leagues are taking care of other people. And Lobo is most of the focal point of this, and he's asking Ray to cut out his heart. And the reason, you know, why he asks that, as we read a little bit further, he just like wants him to uh, regenerate and stuff like that. So. Uh, He's just like saying, you know, to give me a best. So he does that, which is why the cover show, you know, of that. And uh, as you read on, 
he's actually not dead. He is still alive. I mean, he they, has Wolverine capabilities. I'm right. Really I mean, like in the game Injustice the DLC, they don't call him the main man for nothing. For that. Hey, I like how he does that motorcycle at the end. Of it, but, uh, what was that? Okay. I heard some. Anyway, so Agnes is try is uh, having a really intense fight scene with uh, Lobo. And then uh, Adam comes in to give him a, uh, you know, all that as a uh, fight. And uh, they managed to uh, take him down and everything. But now Killer Frost, or Frost I should say, is actually finding a uh, something that could help uh, her out. Like a cure of some type for Frost. Oh, wow. So that's actually going to be really something interesting that I'll be looking into reading of seeing what that cure shall or might be. And now you need to go, somebody wants you in the other room. Oh. Well, here. This I one most certainly will. Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern. Now, let me see what. Now, let's see. Veronica, that's my ex's name. I'm sorry, but Veronica Kale technically is the character. Uh, I apologize, ma'am. Uh, but two more issues of each for Wonder Woman, and you'll never have to hear the word Veronica again, we hope. God, please. Unless the movie. So, Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps. We find out where these green constructs of Hal Jordan come from. Turns out that when Hal Jordan created his own ring, he left the gauntlet, Krona's gauntlet, behind in Sector 526. And guess what? Sarko knew this because he's from the future. And um, movie release. It's a 2009. Oh, it's the 2009 Wonder Woman animated movie. Good, I didn't get that, so I'll get the re-release of it instead. Nice. So then I will officially have almost every. No, still gotta get two more. But anyway, so Sarko actually found the gauntlet and was using the powers, and that's why the Green Lanterns can't fight the constructs that are attacking Mogo. And basically, Hal Jordan decides he's gonna go back where his gauntlet is. And stop Sarko, and of course, um, Rip is going with him. And you got Kyle and Ceranic who are actually protecting the people that are in the um, the hospital. And the rest are uh, Guy Garner and John are fighting against these constructs. And what happens is when Hal Jordan leaves, they basically surrender. And we find out that the gauntlet. Sarko is not using the gauntlet, but the gauntlet actually, because it was so connected to Hal Jordan, it gained a life of its own. And now, when Hal Jordan finds Sarko, he's not going to be facing Sarko. He's going to be facing the monster that he created with the gauntlet, because the gauntlet learned from Hal Jordan. And it gained its own being, its own existence, basically. It created its own little um, oh, life. Life was created because it bonded with Hal Jordan in ways where it somehow made it sentient. So it's going to be very interesting seeing Hal Jordan. The cover is misleading. This is probably going to happen in the next issue. But still, really good. Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps is definitely a strong Green Lantern book. I will say that. Red Hood and the Outlaws, issue number 10, which is uh, the uh, who is Artemis story arc is still continuing. Why does it say I that when I see that that is Jason Todd holding that's himself? That's Jason Todd, yeah. I'm going to get to that, actually. So um, I believe it's part three. Let me just make sure for a second. Oh, part two. Okay. So basically it's Artemis who's still in shock about Akala, who is uh, – you know, still alive and everything after uh, what happened and everything. And just finding her alive and everything, you know, really shocked her. But she's still looking for the bow of Ra. So then we get, um, you know, the whole story of uh, Jason Todd right here with uh, the Joker. Here's some more work, by the way. Where um, there's just like a whole thing that's going on when uh, Jason Todd thought that he killed the Joker, but uh, he actually, um, you know, when you kill the Joker, you know that there's something that's going to happen. Meanwhile, we have Bizarro, who's being more of a 
protector of uh, people rather than uh, a villain, which is actually uh, really something for Bizarro's character. And it's just uh, the whole thing of uh, Akala telling uh, Artemis about the Bow of Ra and what power of man used the Bow of Ra and what happened afterwards of that. So now there's just a whole thing of just trying to find it and bringing the power back to uh, whoever uh, yields it and stuff like that. So um, at the end, it, it, Jason Todd story wound up killing the other Robin, or himself, I'm guessing, for that matter. Oh, whoops. And uh, let's just say in the end, uh, we get a little bit of uh, who is yielding the um, bow of Ra. And that might be on the lead of possibly, if not already, finding it. <clears throat> Continue. Next book. Really good. Detective Comics 956, Orphan goes to town on her mom. The fight of all fights begins, and of course, Clayface ends up taking Batwoman out. Um, we got Batwing and Azriel trying to disarm a nuke, and Batman trying to keep everything going. And I'll tell you, man, I really hate, I really hate, oh God, I forget, the, Ulysses. I hate this kid. I hate this kid a lot. And you could tell that, um, what's his name, Kane, Captain Kane? Colonel Kane hates him too. That's Batwoman's father, hates him too. And we get some really nice action in this book. We get to see Cassie just goes to town on her mom trying to fight, you know, not to prove that she's a better person, but um, to prove that good can win over evil. And then, of course, you got Ra's al Ghul who shows up. And what happens is Kate beats her mom and says, why? Why are you doing this? And she's like, you'd never understand. And she's like, yes, I could. And that's when um, Ross comes in and shoots Kate, uh, shoots, um, not Kate, shoots uh, Cass's uh, mom. And Cass kind of loses it for a second, but Batman holds her back. And basically what happens is Ross destroys the nuke, takes the rest of the League of Shadows away where they'll be locked away forever, and it looks like all is well in the world. It's weird seeing um, Batwoman in a suit, but she's going to the ballet, and she tries to drag Batman along with her. But we find out that Cass's mom whispered something to her in her ear. We don't know what yet. And now Batman talks about something from his past, but he's like, "We need to learn. I need to go back down there. Ross used this against me, and now magic. We need to learn magic because we need to be ready because Ross used magic on me, and now we need to be 20 steps ahead. And I like how Batman warned uh, Ross as he was leaving. He's like, you opened my eyes to something that you um, that now – oh, God. I got to read the quote because it was so good, that quote. Um I want you to understand something, Ross. You've all, you've let me glimpse something here that I don't think you wanted me to see. This isn't over. And, of course, the fight between Batman and Ross never ends. Ross Al Ghul and Batman's fight is one of the one that of legend, almost as, as legendary as him and Joker. But Joker has that little bit of an edge. So, anyway, also in this book, we find out that Ross might be using the Lazarus Pit on Ca Cassandra, on Orphan's mom. Cass's mom. So we might be seeing her again, too. We don't know, but the hint that Ross dropped, yeah, I think they're going to resurrect, um, what you call it, um, Cass's mom. Oh, no, Ulysses crossover in the DC universe after Civil War Two. Not that Ulysses, Tevye, you silly boy. It's another Ulysses, but I can't. I love that he wanted to release the virus into the underground where the League of Shadows was. And then Colonel Kane saw Batwoman and Clayface, and he's like, no. And he's like, but I can still do it. We can still, you know, why? Just because your daughter's possibly alive, do we have to not do it? He's like, you expect us not to just on a hunch that your daughter is going to live? And he just takes Ulysses and throws him through uh, through the chair, and he's like, yes. 
and he basically tells you this. He's dropped the, what do you call it, the nanobots. Awesome, awesome. I love Detective. Now, this is normally my book, but for this month, Stephanie Brown's in the next issue. It says, next issue, spoiler alert. This usually is my book, but Mike's taking over because he has four books. And it's from the Lazarus contract. Go. I'm yes. taking my break. Part one starting of Titans issue number 11. So in this one, like, uh, we're trying to find out what the Lazarus contract is all about. So we have the Titans that are trying to deal with the uh, Ravager in the beginning of the book. And we also have Deathstroke, who's in there. <clears throat> That's um, his son. As well, yeah, his son, Jericho, and all that. Meanwhile, Wintergreen comes to see him in the uh, operation room just to, um, you know, and then they explain that he's blind, for those of them who don't read uh, Deathstroke and all that stuff. And uh, we get all the Titans here. So Deathstroke is still clinically completely blind? Yes. It's a nice artwork, I must say. And one of the men said that they were hired by, um, well, let me see. They were hired by the name of uh, Lazarus to kill the Titans. And then Wally. It was a trap to get Wally. Yeah, so Wally was in a trap of uh, Deathstroke's um, electrical uh, stuff, so to say. And uh, there was, like, lots of stuff that was uh, actually going on there that um, he actually gave away of all that. And as they're trying to look for him, it's going to take a little bit of time because at the end of this comic, and I think... Yeah, Tevye, he refuses to help I think is going to like uh, seeing this one. There's another Wally West saying, how could you be Wally West while well, I'm Wally West? Choose your pick, which is the Wally West. Oh, boy. We're going to have a big old fight over well because wally from the new 52 just found out that this is the wally from the pre new 52 so now it's like this paradox where it's like wait how could you be wally west because i'm wally west and i'll be continued next week in teen times issue number eight this book was really really good titans is really good so uh definitely some uh to check out if you want to uh begin the lazarus contract I think it's going to be like as follows. It's going to be after this Teen Titans, Deathstroke, and then a Titans Annual? Yeah, it's going to be a Titans Annual. Yeah. And that's it. Four parts. Superwoman. Well, this is the last one because I reviewed that book. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Superwoman. So how is Lana? Lana lost her powers. So how is she going to be Superwoman again? And she talks about having these nightmares. We get a little bit of a uh, flashback to when, um, what do you call it, uh, Natasha was young. And um, it's about how John Henry was there for her and her brother when her father was in jail or doing illegal stuff. And Lana finds out that her humanity in this book is her best power. So apparently the, um, <clears throat> oh, what was it, the... I want to see if this is right. Insect Queen armor, uh, for some reason, has reading still of Lana when she wore it. So they give her the Insect Queen costume, thinking that maybe it'll give her her powers back. So they put her in this chamber that pushes her to her absolute limits. And guess what? Apparently, the Superwoman powers that Lana had before she was in the suit end up translating into the suit somehow the suit sucked in some of lana's superwoman powers and now in the suit lana can become superwoman again she gets all of her powers <clears throat> back and now her nightmare becomes a dream <clears throat> and we find out that her emotions are the trigger to making her superwoman and it turns out zeke who is the son who is natasha's brother and the son of John Henry Iron's brother, who is in jail and missing, was taken and missing, and it's this person who took them, and now she ends up fighting him. She's working on raw emotions, but she finds out that her emotions are what give her emotions and her humanity are what give her her powers. Really interesting. I am reinvigorated and reinterested in seeing what is going to go on with Superwoman. Love it. 
awesome stuff. I can't wait to see where Superwoman goes from here. I am now re if you have not read Superwoman, go back one issue and start now. It's on it's really on a very interesting run right now. Really liking it. And if you want to go all the way back to issue one, it was a real pleasure to read. You thought it was Lois Lane New 52, and then it it just literally swerved you. And it's like Lana is the real Superwoman, and it's awesome. This is uh I still wonder how can Lana still have dreams about New 52 Superman? It wasn't. If you look at her dream, it's the Superman current day. Wait a minute. How can Lana still have her powers? Didn't the New 52 Superman go away? He did, but the suit remembered when she had the power, so the powers kind of copied into the suit. Review this for Frontline, so this will be short, and then we're done for tonight. Action Comics, 979. Next issue is 980. Mongol is released from the Black Flower, the Black Wrath Flower. Black, I keep forgetting the damn name of that Mercy. Black Mercy. Yes, the Black Mercy Flower. Eradicator saves him. We get an awesome Lois and Clark moment where they're buying a new apartment in Metropolis because they want to move back to Metropolis. We get an. I got to show you guys this other scene. Mongol and the others end up finding the other part to the chaos. I believe the, not chaos. Um. <clears throat> the oblivion stone but the biggest christopher reeve moment right here i hope that they make this a poster one day anyone who saw superman 2 and you remember the scene where christopher reeve where christopher reeve's running down the alleyway and he changes into superman oh, yeah. this gave me that christopher reeve feel so we got lois and clark we got christopher reeve and then the oblivion stone, and also some of the flying scenes feel very christopher reeve also, I just feel like I'm reading Christopher Reeve in, the, in, in that moment. But anyway, so Hank Hansel has the other uh, piece to the Oblivion Stone. And what? And when you put the Oblivion Stone together, it gives you what your heart most desires. And what does Hank Hansel desire? To be Cyborg Superman once again. Now, my question is, now that new, you know, that whole thing, just wait till tomorrow on Frontline Live to have you. All questions will be answered by Skynet himself. Yeah, probably. Um... I would like to know how Hank Hansel remembered he was Cyborg Superman. That's the one plot hole that I hope they cover. But in the end, he makes Mongol bow down to him once again, and now there's only one other person to add to the Superman Revenge Squad, and that is Zod. Now, I will not be physically picking up Suicide Squad. However, I'll be checking it out digitally because the Eradicator is going to make an appearance in there. It's one of those ways for DC to make you pick up something you don't really want to pick up if you're not picking it up already. And says, I'm not picking up physically Suicide Squad. I'm not going to pick it up now. I'm just going to read it digitally instead. That's what Comixology is for. Yeah. So with that, that is it for this review, guys. Thank you so much for everybody who stuck with us at 1.18 in the morning. I am exhausted. I am ready for bed. I have been on a gasp. Normal sleep schedule. What the hell, right? I'm going to be back on a late schedule soon, more than likely. But for right now, I'm on a gas normal sleep schedule, so I'm exhausted. I might pop on and play one Uno game. I've become obsessed with that on PlayStation, but that's my own personal problem. Holy obsessed. Till next time, though, this is Comic Frontline. You're watching this live on Comic Frontline and first on Comic Frontline. We are your number one source for comic-related news, reviews, and a whole bunch more. If you like this video, please, if you're new, hit that subscribe button. So this way we're in your subscription box and you don't miss out on a single video. Now, this is what I wanted to say before that. If you were not here with us live, if you're watching this post live, I would love to hear what you guys thought about all the books we reviewed in this video and more. Feel free to let us know in the comments below. Likes, dislikes, agree, disagree, recommendations. We love hearing from you guys. The comments are your guys' turn. That's your turn to tell us what you thought about the books that came out this week. This is my fidget spinner. Every person on the planet now has this. Eagle, my friend Eagle, had this before it was cool. But anyway, thank you guys so much for being here with us. If you watch this on my channel, it's June, and we are very, very close to episode 400. So be ready for that. And if you watch this on my channel, and this is the first time you're watching it, feel free to let us know what you thought about the books in this video. And also, a few people didn't know this. I'm only going to break character once and pretend like we're in June. This was pre-recorded. 
We are not behind in our comics. This was recorded on May. The date of this is it's one in the morning on May 16th. We started it um, a little bit before May 15th. We start. We went live on May 16th, 12 a.m. But we recorded this the week it came out on Frontline. They're on time. These are going up late on my channel. That is why we're not late with our review. The video is already up on Frontline. This is being re-uploaded to my channel all the way through to 400 up to the announcement video. So this was already recorded somewhere else. I can't say that enough. Thank you all so much for being here with us live. Thank you all for watching if you're watching this post live. And we will see you guys tomorrow night, which is, well, tonight actually, which is Tuesday night for Frontline Live. And then after that, we'll see you guys again in the next video. Yep. Take care. The day Injustice 2 has come out and the people already beat the campaign mode. Tell me about it, Alan. But we're waiting until the unlimited full all DLC comes out for that. Take care, everybody, and have a great night, great day, whenever you're watching this. And we'll see you guys really soon in the next video. Yeah, everybody. Bye, everybody.